welcome back to Raising the Revival Generation, and I think this is episode 20. It is. Like, every week we have to look up because we forget, and I'm always, like, one behind, but I'm pretty sure that this is episode 20, which is kind of like a milestone. Like, 10 I felt was like a milestone, so now we're at 20, and I don't know, I do things in 10, so. See, when I don't start the episode, I don't know what to do, <laughs> so keep talking. Anyway, welcome back to this episode of Raising the Revival Generation podcast. We are so blessed to be here. Um, before we get going, we're going to start out with announcements. It just seems to work better. And uh, if you get bored of us, this is the point where we shut off, but that's okay. Um, so a few things we have launched in this past week. We're so excited. Our new website, and it is brand new, up. There's probably some typos on it. So if you're an editor and you want to edit me, please, by all means, do it. Um, but uh, you can find it at revivalgenerationministries.com, and maybe we can get that on the screen. Maybe. maybe. Do we have that? Yes, I can do that. Skillset? I, I don't can know. do that. So this will be post edit. Yeah. Well, I know we can do it on YouTube. We but... need one of those things where they go. <laughs> well, we're not pa pausing. <laughs> So, no, when, that way I would know where to okay. cut. All that's, right, anyway. So if you're so you watching this. That's, that's film. Okay. I know okay. what it okay. means. Never mind. But if you're watching this on uh, Spotify or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just find the link there. Otherwise, just go to the description of this video and the link is going to be right there as well. So we're really excited about that. We, I worked hard on it. It's simple. Um, and then you're going to see the next thing on that website that we are rolling out with this week. It's been a big week for us is we now have merch. Now, we're not wearing any of the merch because we don't have it yet. We're waiting we, to get it in. You're wearing our colors. I am. Well, kind of. This is orange. Huh? But uh, we have merch and we're going to be adding some merch. And if you have like a phrase that maybe you've heard us say on this podcast that you would like to wear or put on something, let us know. Um, and, and we can I have do, one. We can, no, you're not allowed. Um, <laughs> what is it? I was gonna have you. I was gonna have you put a picture of, of Pastor Sam on the is shirt. Is it his mugshot? And then put above it, "Crazy Pastor Sam." <laughs> well, okay, he can he can get that shirt. Um, but anyway, so our merch is live, and uh, we have adult T-shirts. There's like a ladies like kind of like crop shirt because I like shorter, like not like crop, but you know what I mean. And there's, I know, I just, everyone's going to hate me. Emphasis on ladies. <laughs> yeah. Manny, we don't want to see you in a crop shirt, please. Thank you. Um, and uh, and then we, ha we even have shirts for kids on there because th they're the reason why we're doing this. And babies, we, you can get like a little t-shirt for your baby. You can be hat. all decked out in yeah, Raising just, the Revival like, whatever. Generation we're adding, swag. We're going to add a tote bag and that all just has like Raising the Re Revival Generation on it. Tote but we bag. have other things coming out. We have a hat on there. We have an amazing tumbler, which I will be getting because I'm. It was like out of stock forever, and then when I went to go pu publish the merch, it was back. So I'm excited to get that. And uh, yeah, so we're excited. Wait, Don't the worry. Razor, the Revival Generation tumbler was no, out of stock before we even sold it. Okay, I feel like these are it's all on things, demand. I feel like these are all things that you should know in order to get it from the company. The, I the tumbler I was, was sold out. They're drop ship. We're not making this merch and you should be praising God for that. Nor are we our, kid, our children are literally downstairs <laughs> hand painting mugs. And like, we're also like not shipping it. Like it's drop ship because if we had to ship it, it would take you like nine months to get it. So, we'd have to come to us. Yeah. It's just, we'd have overhead. And we, then we have, have zero capacity um, or business skills of that nature. So um, that's not, that's not a thing for us. But um, anyway, so if you want merch, if you want to rep, oh, there's a sticker on there too. Uh, but if you want to rep um, raising the revival generation, you want to put that, it's an indoor outdoor sticker so you can put it on your car. The cup is metal. Yeah, there's a mug, like a really nice mug. We're like really picky about mugs, so. You know how many mugs good. I've had that have either been broken by kids or they get put in the dishwasher and then all of a sudden Luke Skywalker doesn't have a face anymore or Darth Vader's face has fallen off because that's on my mug because I'd have Star Wars mugs. I am thoroughly shocked that you didn't blame the breaking of the mugs on me. Or the, I even have that orange one I got from visiting a church that I had for like two days and then it got broken. It got chipped, yeah. We go through things fast, but that's what happens when you have literally seven kids. So, and Seven kids, two dogs, two cats. And a partridge and a pear tree. So, any other? Right. Oh, what about the other giveaway? Tell them to go oh there. yeah, so so with that we just announced our winners for um, these books here. Our winner has the opportunity to choose one of them. We're gonna ship it to her. Um, this is the Anointing by Dr. Rodney Howard Brown and his new book on Jesus. 
Um, and so we, we wanted to, well, I think it's his newest book. Oh, maybe. We wanted to bless somebody with that. So that's all over and done, but don't worry. There is more. So, uh, right. Wait, there's more <laughs> right now for this week. If it's you're like an infomercial <laughs> right now, if you're listening right now up until July 1st, 2023, uh, and you want to join the Facebook fellowship group that we have going on, this is a community. And, and actually we wanted to clarify some things. We created this fellowship, this community, to have conversations with people, to have interaction for you guys to get just a better look at our hearts and who we are as people, but also to interact, ask questions. So if you ever have like a parenting question or like you're a pastor and you're like, hey, uh, how can I do this for my church, you know, for families or whatever, go ahead and like post those questions. Like we, we love stuff like that. Prayer it's, it, requests. it's specifically a community. Yeah, it's for it's for everybody to participate in. Um, but prayer requests, uh, testimonies, anything of that nature, like we love. Or if you like have listened to something this week and it's really blessed you, you know, share it with us or a book recommendation, all that. Like we love that stuff. So um, you can find it on Facebook. It's going to be linked below this episode. But it is uh, raising the revival generation fellowship on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. All right. Now you can actually start the episode. Welcome to episode 20. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go rehash all that out. But, um, but well, let's just, because, it, because this co- podcast ends up being a conversation between us. Yeah. And, we, and, it, and a lot of it in, is influenced Sometimes by. Sometimes an argument. Not really. But it become, <laughs> it, it's influenced by, um, by what we talk about off, off air. Right. What, we, what we've, what we've encountered like and, what, and what we experience. So like right. a lot of this podcast for instance, is our story. Yeah, We shared our journey about how we got to where we're at and mm-hmm. what all the things that God had to do and what we had to experience and living in an RV and, and just all the all the stuff that we've experienced in our life. We kind of shared with you so that you guys can see. Because a lot of times when you're going through it, right, you don't realize what's on the other side. Yeah, right. You don't realize what's on the other side and you don't know what. So it, it's easy to give up. Actually, I heard this. I heard this story one time that was said about a woman who was swimming the English Channel, mm-hmm. and it was foggy, and she was swimming it, and it was so foggy, and she would, just, she was, she had gone so far, but she lost sight about where where her destination was mm-hmm. and what was on the other side of the right. fog, and she ended up giving up, mm-hmm. and so she had swam all this distance only to find that she was less than a half mile off the shore when she had given up and she would have made it. And so That's and so killer. sometimes when you're going through the storms of life, right, you don't know how close you are to the other side and you don't know the benefit and the joy of what it means right. to come out on the other side. Or how close you are or what's on the other side. Sometimes you're you know that God is stirring you, that God is doing stuff in your life, but you don't know where you're even going to end up. And sometimes that's that's when you're you're on the boat and you just got to follow Jesus. And that well, that's why in, encouragement is so important. Right. It's important to have people who, who who can speak into your life and share their share what they've gone through. Right. Not to not to because that, that's the other side of things. Like we've had that. Well, you just don't know how bad it's going to be, or you just don't know how bad life gets. But that's not. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus came so that we could have life and have it abundant. Right. And and so uh, and so some people take that well maybe it means abundantly bad, but that's not <laughs> it's an overflowing life like, but but sometimes when you're going through it like uh, in in Romans for instance when he's talking about Abraham, it said Abraham believed in faith and then he um, and he believed against hope he hoped against hope, mm-hmm. and then he saw the promise fulfilled. Amen. And it wasn't right away. I know. Um, and there's and there's a journey of in faith, and it's it, it, and a lot of that journey is getting us to the realization that we truly know who God is, right? And uh, and that we understand who He is based on His Word. Yeah. That that's, that's right. the ultimate revelation we have. We we read the testimonies of what God did with David, of what mm-hmm. God did with Joshua, of what God did with Moses, and all the way through the Bible, and we see testimonies of of who God is. Yeah. Um, and so. With that, we share our story about about what God has done in our life, where He's brought us from, and we've made it to the other side of that st- of those storms. And we share that with you to say to say, keep going. God's got you. God has a great right. plan for your life. Don't surrender now just because things are hard. Right, and knowing that you know we're not. No one's ever at the end of the journey. No one's ever at like the point of making it. No one's ever or no one should be ever at their peak amount of faith, right? It should consistently be growing deeper and more and more and more. And so we we so much that we share on this podcast is in live time. It, it's it's what it's 
Sometimes it's an echo of things that are going on in our life. And, you know, we don't always like reveal like super detailed personal things. Um, But you kind of get like this play like through the journey. And in a couple of years, you know, we'll be able to come back and listen to it and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that, you know. It's almost like a vlog. Remember when our dog got hit by a car, you know, like that, 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 that stuff. And so he really did. But he's, he's fine. Don't worry. We talked about that last episode. Um, And, and, and with that too, like, so. So yeah, like what Paul says, he says that not that I've already obtained it. Right. But one thing I do is I press, I strip off all that hinders me and I press on yeah. to the heavenly That's calling. Right. So if Paul, who's writing books in the Bible, who, who's, mm-hmm. who's preaching so long that someone falls out a window, dies, and he brings them back to life through prayer and the laying out. Like if, if he's saying that I have not obtained it, right. not until the day I see Jesus face to face and hear well done, good and faithful, that, that we... In our, we need to be that same way in our faith. Mm. That we go from glory to glory. We're not satisfied with, with like last, yesterday's manna. But there's more. That's, that's yeah. encouraging too because there's more. There's deeper relationship with God. And there's greater um, blessings and greater anointing right. to walk in. There's right. greater encounters. There's, greater, there's, there's more that he's calling us to. There is someone at that door shaking it. But he's calling us <laughs> to deeper places. And it's about, sh- it's about taking off the things that hinder us. Right. Mm-hmm. And not getting like in that story where you get so close to where God has for you, but because you lose sight and you lose vision, you didn't fix your eyes on Jesus, the yeah. author and perfecter of your faith. You fixed it on the problems. Then you end up surrendering and you end up giving up what God has for you right. and rather than pursuing it. And it takes that. So as, as, here's, a, here's a shirt for you. You said if you had a saying for a shirt. Let me write it down. Um, faith is for today. Hope is for the future. Okay. And um, last night, last, yeah, I, I keep saying it. I said it in my sermon last night. Um, and that's from Pastor Sam, by the way. Um, but last night when, I, when we were preaching to the, to the students, because we do the student ministry, I'm a pastor, she's a pastor, and we do student ministry, and we, and we were talking about David when he says, I lift my eyes up to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, mm-hmm. right? And so, and so in that moment, David, he's not negating the issues. A lot of Christians negate issues. Well, we should be perfectly married. We should have a perfect house. We should have perfect things in our life. Like, it shouldn't be that we are the ones who have issues. Yeah. Right? And, right. and, and, I, and I believe that as you surrender to God, as you continue to, to live as husbands the way that God's called you to live, to look like Christ to your wife, right. and, and the two become one, that when you do it God's way, it's always going to succeed. I believe that 100%. Yeah. God doesn't set us up for failure. It's not like one day we're going to get to heaven and be like, God, your plan didn't work out for right. me. Um, but, um, but it's also, where was I going with that? What did I say before that? Uh, a Christian's living perfect life. Oh, but, but, it's, but, it's, but it's living by faith. Yeah. So when the issues come, David says, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? He's saying in that moment, I'm going to practice faith yeah. to say, I'm going to look to God. Right. I could turn to people. I could, and trust me, don't put your faith in people. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even matter if they're your parents. It doesn't matter if they're, put your faith in Jesus. Right. He's the only one that's never going to let you down. Right. That's right. And so, um, and so in that moment, David has the opportunity to respond in faith. Hmm. He says, the Lord is my protector. He watches me when I sleep. He watches me when I'm awake. He does it. He's my protector. And so faith is saying, God, I know you are. And it changes the way you interpret the thing, the surrounding, right. your surroundings, right? right? So if God is who he says he is, and, and we know that without faith, it's impossible to please God, because it says that the one who is going to draw near to God, uh, well, the one that is, is first going to believe that he exists. Hmm. Right. Right. So there's this idea in our relationship that we're drawing nearer to God. So there's, there's your whole thing that we haven't obtained it yet. There's deeper right. places to go, which right. is amazing. Right. Because if you have a healing ministry and you've seen like people healed, there's still deeper places. There's still more. <laughs> there's still That's more. Right. You haven't obtained it. Right. And then, but the first thing is that you believe that God exists. Right. And not just any God. The God. The God of Him. the Bible. Yeah. And we tell, our ki- we tell our kids and we tell the students this all the time. And we tell each other this, that, that, that it's the God of the Bible, the, God, the, the way God reveals himself to us. We believe that that God exists, the God who parts Red right. Seas, the God who shuts the mouths of lions, the God who makes it so fire doesn't burn you, that God, the one who says, I am the Lord, I do not change. That's right. The God who raises the dead, the God who opens blind eyes, the God who was walking on water, the God who made the fishes jump into the nets and break the nets, that abundance, that God is the God that we believe exists. Not right. what other people say, not even what theology. That's theology books written by people. We don't look to that God because we have a relationship with the God of, of all right. 
of all eternity, the God of creation, the one that David says, that's the one I, that is my help. That's the God we right. believe in. And that he's a rewarder of those who pursue him. That's right. And he's looking for faith. I mean, that's, if, if you're hearing that banging and you wondering what that awkward was, uh, our baby is not very happy right now. <laughs> so, I can't tell if that's a baby. She's the she's, cat. Well, she's fully or being taken care of, but I got a message. The baby's mad. So I said, bring her outside. So I think that they're trying to go outside. I think that that's what's I, I texted, happening. put her in a sleeper hold. <laughs> um, but you know, the thing is like, God, he's looking for faith. And it, it talks about that with the persistent widow, which we've talked about uh, on here before is he, he describes that, that faith and that persistence. And then he says, will I even find this when I come back? Like, am I even going to find this? Which to me is like a challenge. It's like a challenge for, for the church. But one thing that I keep finding in, in my life and in, in our personal life or just in, in situations is this, is that when you start talking about the amount of faith that we have or a person has, there's an offense. Yeah, because people... And so, no. like, if, if you talk about, and people always go to the, the extremes every time. It's always about dead babies or dead children, trigger warning, right? It's always like, well, you know, like, are you saying that, like, so-and-so didn't have enough faith for their, you know, kid to live in that situation? And it's it's taken and it's, it's I don't know how to, I don't know the right word to describe it. But it, it, you go to this extreme situation well, they do to it, shut down the conversation. They do it with abortion too. Right. So it's, right. it's like the straw man argument. Yeah. That, that, that's like, right. Yeah. That's exactly like we're gonna, it. We're going to make like take the most crazy, the crazy extreme and make it the norm. Right. So this is the norm now. What? No, it isn't. That's, that, that's well, like an outlier. And the other question is, is do, does personal experience negate God's word? Because that's the other thing. Like, is God who he says he is? D it, well, and and that, that's what it comes down to. And so when we talk about faith and we talk about like having enough faith and having more faith and increase our faith and increase our territory, like in the prayer of Jabez, right? And, and, and sometimes people hear, and I've been in that situation before. I've been where I've heard that I, I don't have enough faith and I, and it, and it causes a stirring. It causes a, a very, honestly, a very prideful offense in me that usually, uh, before I would want to pick apart, you know, who it was that was saying that or, or whatever, because they have to be wrong. And in the effort of doing that, showing essentially that my faith was, you know, stronger or my belief in God was stronger, my knowledge of God was stronger. And so, uh, and, but the more I think about it, the more I go on this journey, the more, uh, that we are in God's word, the more that we know him and have intimate time with him. I think, you know, I, I know that, that my faith can grow deeper. I know that my, you know, and, and, and I think of like, you know, here I am. And then there's, there's Paul, there's his faith. Like I'm not even there yet. And he could go even more, right? Even Paul could have had more faith, right? Even, even those yeah, situations. You got, you got this apostle. So we never max out. Yeah. You got this apostle writing that he's literally wrote most of the new Testament, right? Right. And he's saying, not that I've already obtained it. Right. That, right. Because, and, and, and actually, Paul. as we were like, reading, as we were reading in this book this morning, when I was reading it to you, the anointing mm -hmm. by Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. Uh, he can be, no, mind. Uh, it said that, it said that. He can be what? I want to know what you're saying. A, a sponsor of an episode. Yeah. We love you, Dr. Rodney. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what he was, what, what Dr. Rodney was saying was, was remembering to, to stay small in your eyes. That's right. Humility is right. the humility and, uh, and understanding that. And so walking in humility, but another, another aspect of it too, is that, is that you interpret your, your situations and you interpret the world around you. Based on what you believe. Yeah, that's right. Based on what you believe. So you interpret things in this world based on what you believe. That's right. And and it's and sometimes when you go and, and that, that goes for sickness, that mm -hmm. goes for that goes for so so like when you were talking about you brought up the extreme of of when friends that or bad things happen, yeah. right? Like that is right. that it always has to do with a child dying. And well yeah. It's every time. But yet but yet uh on the flip side, there's stories. I think I read one in um, Kenneth Copeland's magazine. What's that called? It was like last year sometime. And it, it was a family that was told that like she miscarried, her baby was going to die. And they like believed in faith over and over again that like, no, the baby's alive. And she had well, a live baby, you well, know? And Doctors I, told her the baby was dead. Like, and I, dead, dead. And I think part of that too is the idea that like, like we blame God for everything that's wrong in this world. Right. It's his so, will for death and sickness. So, yeah. And so... So we, so God automatically gets blamed for those things. Right. Sorry, I got a hiccup. Wow. Yeah. It's usually me. 
No, you yawn. <laughs> I haven't yawned at all. And now that you said it, now I'm going to have to yawn. But, uh, but God gets blamed for the bad things that happen That's in this right. world. But, but we know God's will. We know his purpose for right. creating this world. And because and, if you, if you want to know God's will for this world, look at Genesis 1 and 2. And then look at the end of Revelation. That's right. Perfection. Uh, 21 and 22, right? Nothing that, missing, nothing broken. As, yeah, that's a, as a friend of ours says, that, that right. that's God's intent. In fact, when the world was broken, right, who did God send? And we told this, he sent, he, he had supernatural provision for the yeah. earth's problem because he didn't send a man. He didn't send anything that was created. He sent Jesus Christ, the only right. begotten, who was in heaven. He sent him and the word became flesh. Supernatural provision right. for the world's natural problem. Right. The problem of the world was sin. Sin caused by humans. You talked about this last night. Yes, I did. That's, yeah. I said that. But you can keep going. Sorry. No, I know. I'm just, I was just stating. You talked about this last night. Of course, they weren't there. So it just got awkward. No, but, but, but the idea <laughs> that like, that the reason why bad things happen is because sin in this world. That's right. Because in the, in the garden, when God created it, there was no sin and there was no death and there was no destruction and there was no just miscarrying. There was no abortion. There was none of those things before sin entered the world, right? Right. And so sin enters the world and bad things happen. Right. And then it even says this. It says that the, that the prince of the power of the air, the, the ruler who is now over the sons of disobedience, he's the one that's running around and right. causing havoc and causing... Right. The, the, the devil is a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? It, it says that he's, a, he's going around like a roaring lion seeking yep. whom he may devour. Right. And it's understanding that. And so sometimes what ends up happening, we blame God for the problems in the world. Right. And we, ne and we neglect the fact that there's spiritual forces at work which we're called to tear down in Corinthians. Right, exactly. The weapons of our warfare are, are not carnal. We're not fighting flesh and blood. Right. And, and the church on a whole, the capital C church, really, especially, you know, in the West, in, in America, we are really ill-equipped for spiritual warfare. There, it's something that churches do not, are not necessarily teaching about. It's something that... Well, I, don't, I don't think they truly understand that there's... It, there's not a comprehension So you read Daniel, right? And I was reading Daniel today, and I was yeah. just talking to someone about this uh, today. What? Me. You talked to him. Oh, and Manny. Manny. Well. Um, but I was talking about this, <laughs> and in Daniel, when Daniel's praying... Um, well, actually, uh, Daniel has a, has a revelation, a message that's given to him, and he becomes pale, and, and he... He uh, becomes fearful, and then Gabriel shows up to give him the interpretation. It says the, um, it says that um, Gabriel says, "I would have came faster, but I was I was postponed by the prince of Persia. Right. I was fighting against him. Michael had to come, and he had to he had to to fight for me so I could come to you. And now right. he says, I go back. An and, angel, the and he says the prince of Greece is going right. to come. So he's not talking about about um people like actual right. princes he's talking about the spiritual side of things that we don't see that are in systems right, that are in yes the areas. principalities and there are principalities everywhere yeah and so he's not talking about those things so one thing that happens with us as, as like we live in america right mm -hmm. it becomes it becomes almost like a like a about political systems that but we don't see the spiritual behind right them. so it the spiritual behind it everything is so foreign because you know, we have an answer for everything. We have therapy, we have medication, we have social services, we have all, all of like those, those things. We have a government, be it a corrupt government, you know, we have, we have all of those things that there's a, we're almost like desensitized towards like what's actually going on. Because like, we don't almost see like the there's, spirit. there's a blinder on yeah. where we don't actually see it. And then when you see it, you can't really unsee it. Then you're like... Because that, that's the crazy thing, too. So everything that's physical... So when we when we look at the world, everything that is physical was created by spiritual. Right. The Lord is right. spirit. Right. And he spoke everything into existence. Everything spiritual. And I've been saying that forever. People get mad at me. But everything is spiritual. Yeah. Every... every ichne, it has ichne, to be. What is an ichness? What? <laughs> I said every ichness. Every sickness in our bodies, that's spiritual. Every mental health condition, that's spiritual. And people are going to think there's an outrage with that, right? It's always spiritual, which to, means that there's always a supernatural spiritual answer. Well, I was thinking about that even like in – so if you read the story of Daniel, right, there's really two things at play. There's two kingdoms. Right. There's yeah. the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world. That's right. And the kingdom of the world you see in the different kings, Nebuchadnezzar, Darius, uh, the other guy there in between who has the finger writing on the wall and he says that he pooped his pants. <laughs> he soiled his drawers. That guy. Um, but but he, everything is, there's two kingdoms at play. No. Uh, but there's two kingdoms at, at play there. 
And and God is, but God's kingdom is always prevailing. Right. So okay. when so when Daniel's in the midst of getting ready to throw be thrown into the lion's den, the kingdom of this world, the kingdom that that Satan is trying to influence, is trying to take Daniel out of the position that God has for him. And so he tries to get he tries to create a law. Mm-hmm. Right. We have laws. Right. That try to prohibit Daniel from doing the thing that God has called him to do out of obedience. And Daniel says, well, Daniel doesn't say, well, it's 30 days. If I can just go a month without praying to God. It sounds familiar from a couple of years ago, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Just 15, wow. 14 days to, 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 to curve. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds familiar. But he says, he says, but if I just go 30 days without praying to my God, right. then I can just go, skate through it and be okay. Right, but, Daniel, be but Daniel says, no. And Daniel, it actually says in the Bible that Daniel goes up because he realizes that there's a spiritual force at play. Right. Sure. There's a spiritual force at play. Same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All they had to do was just bow down. They didn't have to pray to it. Right. They could have just done the act and said, well, I'm just going to ceremonial, bow down, and just get this over with. But no, because there's a spiritual, em- there's a spiritual thing that's happening behind right. it. There's a spirit yeah. at play. The prince of Persia was at work, and that's the, that's the, the demonic forces. Right. But Daniel, right, he gets to, to the lion's den scene, and he says, he says no, I'm not going to do that. Right. In fact, I'm going to do what I've always done. And it says that he went up into his, in, into his room. He faced Jerusalem, which was, the, which was the holy city of God. He faced yeah. where the presence of God was known to be, and it said that he gave thanks. Hmm. And they saw it, and they heard it. They knew what they were doing because they knew that Daniel was not going to stop right. doing the things that he— right. but, but Daniel had, a, had faith. Yeah. And we talked about this last night too, right? Daniel believed that the Lord was his shepherd. Yeah, that's right. And so therefore, it doesn't matter what the enemy's doing around him. Right. God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Right. My life is blessed because God cool. is my shepherd. And it doesn't matter what the enemy's doing because God is my shepherd. Well, and, and it's that underlining thing. We talked about this a couple episodes again with Jehoshaphat. It's that underlining thing of I'm going to obey even when it's crazy, right? Even when it doesn't make sense because oftentimes... Uh, That's faith. And when we look in scripture, it t- it, means, it it says, the uh, Bible tells us that uh, his, na- his ways are not our ways, right? His thoughts are not our thoughts. And we see that with like every example of every situation in the Bible, right? Because it never makes sense. It's always something that man would say like, well, that that's not logical. That doesn't make sense, right? And in every single situation. So it's the same with Jehoshaphat. That situation, it didn't make sense what they did. But yet God was there. He was in it. And they worshiped him. And they thanked him. And they had faith that they were going to go forward, right? Or, or I think of... Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? It didn't make sense to choose, you know, a young girl who wasn't even married. That doesn't make sense. That goes against every social norm of of (laughs) that. It goes against, you know, and and the issues that it caused. But again, God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so we have to understand that sometimes we struggle a little bit with comprehension, first of all, on the supernatural. And part of that, and then that has to do with our faith building and increasing our faith. And that's one thing that, that we've been praying as a family uh, it's just that our faith would be increased, our territory would be increased. And and the other thing that I wanted to mention like way earlier is, is like sometimes when you're on the cusp of something, like it gets real hard for a hot minute. Like there are there are situations when God is about to do something, when breakthrough is about to happen, it begins to get really hard and you begin to get arrows like thrown at you from from every in every direction. And a lot of times people, and I think we'd mentioned this in another episode, maybe, or maybe it was a conversation, but, they view that as like, oh, well, like God doesn't want me to do or, that. But instead, it's, it's a literal real life enemy who's literally trying to take you out of what God's calling you. So tie that back to Daniel, right? Right. Daniel's getting ready to get thrown into the lion's den. Yeah. Satan is going to try to think that this is the end. Mm. Like he's going to kill the man of God who's actually in control over most of the kingdom at this point. Right. Because he's been faithful to God throughout the whole story. God, it doesn't matter what the enemy does. Right. Because God prepares a table before us Amen. in the presence of our enemy. Our lives are blessed not because we can pick out what the enemy is going to do and we're going to thwart it. Right. It's because the Lord is our shepherd. And the attacks don't stop. And, and so, and so Daniel, doesn't, doesn't, Daniel doesn't have to fear, right? Mm-hmm. And so, so Satan, because we're talking about the spiritual things at play here, and Satan is trying to stop that. And right. so he's going to get the man of God taken out. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work. In fact, uh, Darius at that point says... You can only worship the one true God because right. he's the God who saves. And you want to know the crazy thing about this too? I was talking to Manny about this in the car. And I said, I said the reason why the Magi came, because they believe they were from that area, right. is because of the testimony of Daniel. Right. The because Daniel, Daniel proclaimed 
the God of Israel through the life that he lived to the mm. point where the Magi are looking for the Messiah mm. years later, hundreds of years later, because of his faithfulness. Everything God does is intentional. And, th and that's just an amazing thing. And you think about that too. Satan tried to take out Jesus. Oh. How did he try to do it? Yeah. Through it killing the baby boys. Killing the babies. He's but, also like not original. Because if you think about it, you think about today, you think about the same things. You, it's just, it's a cycle. There's no creativity. The enemy has no creativity. It's always the same thing. And if, and if our faith is where it should be and we step out where God asks us to be, it always ends up being the same outcome, right? That the church, that, that the people of God, the royal priesthood always come out above. Always. But it, but when you when you start realizing like the spiritual forces that play behind things, it makes it easier to live. Right. Because oh, yeah. because you know like they, like David says, like I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. So who's the who's the ever present help in times of trouble? It's none other than God Almighty, right. who's above it all. Right. He reigns above them all. So when you look at it from that perspective, when you start looking at the world through that perspective and the problems through that perspective, and you start walking by faith, and you start saying, God, I believe, like Hebrews 11, 6, read it, memorize it. God, I believe who you are based on your right. word, Amen. and I'm going to draw near to you. Then you start yeah. allowing God to be the, to be the source of uh, the supernatural right. source for the problems in your life. Hebrews, Hebrews says that we have, we have this great high priest. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace that we may find help in our times of need. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that is the accessible um, access that we have to God. We can approach the throne of grace when? In our times of need. Right. And, and so with that comes this really bad ph theology of suffering. Yeah. That, that we're just called to just... That is an epidemic in the church today. Yeah. Anyway. It is an epidemic. It is literally cancer on the church right now. But Well, because you look at the promises of God, right? Right. And and you say, you say like, well, God makes these... God actually reveals his name to his people by, by his character. His character is his name. Right. So he says, I'm the Lord, your provider. Yes. So what, do you, so what happens when you don't have enough? Mm. Where do you turn to? What is faith? Faith is for today. Right. Right. As long as you're doing the word of God and walking in the word of God and you're not like trying to use God like some kind of weird genie in a bottle to say, well, God, I came to you because, because I need money. Right. It's the same thing with tithing. Hmm. If you tithe with the wrong heart because you think that you're, all of a sudden a, a gold brick is going to fall from heaven because you need it. And, and so you just, you're like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat it like a, like a fortune cookie or like a lucky right. uh, scratch ticket. Or not. That's not the way it works. God looks at the heart. So it doesn't matter if I gave a million dollars or one dollar, if I gave with the wrong heart. That's why when Jesus is talking about the widow's might, and mm -hmm. she gives one, and the, and the Pharisees who had a lust for money, yeah. they could give everything they want, but right. their heart was wrong. And, and I think a lot of times is, is we used, uh, to go back to the beginning, is we use extreme examples uh, almost as, as an excuse, right? Because having faith that takes, a, that takes work, it takes stepping out. It takes living life literally in the overflow, not allowing depletion, not allowing those things. And so, like, uh, we have to remember. So, because a lot of times, if you talk about faith and you talk about stepping out, you talk about the principles of like, who is God? Like, what does He say? Well, who uh, in His name, the Lord, my provider, right? And then you think like, or you hear the examples like, well, you know, my aunt had all the faith in the world. She went to church her whole life, and you know, she still starved to death, or like, or 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 whatever, right? You hear those extreme examples, or one time I prayed and like God didn't provide, and I didn't get it, or this happened, or that happened, this tragedy happened, this tragedy, and it is almost used as like a cop out. And I know that that's harsh. I mean, I know. I mean, I tend to be a pretty black and white person. I know that that's harsh, but the gospel is offensive. Well, the other thing is you got to have promises, right? So yeah. like, so if you think about like when Jesus is in the boat and he's sleeping and they're going across to the Garanese so that, because Jesus says, we, we're going to the other side. Mm. There's the promise. Right. Jesus's word. Yeah. He says, we're going to the other side. The, the disciples start getting scared when the storms come. Right. But what did Jesus say? We're going to the other side. He didn't say we're going to go halfway and then we're going to sink. Right. The promise of God's word, God's word is always sure. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to know God's word. Yeah. And you have to apply it to your life. And you have to live it. You, you have, have to live it. it. And so that's, that's the key right there. And, and, and so when I talk about living it, I'm talking about in, every, out when you're done. in every area of your life. Yeah. So you can't just say, well, I live it at church, or I live it. I read it, my Bible. Or I, or I read it here, but then when it comes to your kids or to your marriage, you're not doing anything in God's word. 
or your business, say you're, say you're, say you're very shady in business, yeah. That, then you you kind of you kind of missed it. You kind of missed the mark. But but it's it's understanding God's word and holding on to those promises. Oh. Jesus, uh, real fast. Uh, sorry, and then I'll turn it over to you because I get excited. Is that God tells Isaiah in the in the book of Isaiah? He tells his people, "Remind me of my promises. Yeah. Remind me of them. Hold on to them to the point where I'm saying, God, you said this in your word, right. and I believe you are who you say you are, and I believe you will do the things you say you're going to do, and that you don't change. So if you were with Daniel, you were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you were with David, right. then you for sure are with me. Right. Uh, and one thing I always tell our, our students is, like, God doesn't forget his promises. So when he says to remind you know, him of his promises, that's, that's not to remind God. He's not like, oh yeah, I forgot I promised this guy healing, you know, like, or, or which by the way, he always promises us healing, but that's, a, that's another subject for another day. But he doesn't forget his promises. He knows his promises. We don't have to remind him of it because he forgets. We remind God of the promises because we forget. And when we remind him of his promises, it encourages and it strengthens our faith and it helps our faith to be activated. It helps our faith to be increased and to step out into it. And then therefore, whatever the promise is, whatever it is, to be able to obtain it faster. The other thing too, like, so like, so like with the people in the Bible, the reason why they get there is because God reveals his glory through them. Yes. So that's the other opportunity we have as we walk in this world where there's trials and there's tribulations and there's troubles. Right. Is that God, it's an opportunity for God to reveal his goodness and his right. glory to those around us. Right. And so it's, it, it's understanding that too. Like, yeah. Like when, by the time the story of Daniel and the lion's den is over, it's a totally different outlook. Yeah. Like, like you, you're not just seeing a man that they're just trying to take off the face of the earth. You're seeing a man who's walking in the promises of God. And now the whole nation... Is, pro, is only allowed to praise the God of right. Daniel because he's the God who saves. Right, and, and when you look at the story of Daniel, that's not just meant for us to be to have like as a cutesy Sunday school story, which is a lot of times what it's made to be, right? It's just a cutesy, oh, Daniel and the big kitties, you know, like it's, it, it's just a thing, but it's not. It's actually an example of faith to live by and the promises that God has and the blessing and, dare I say, the prosperity that he has through Daniel and in that, right? And so like it's one thing, it's it's – we're supposed to model our life off that. We're supposed to model our lives off of these people well, that we see. Well, sometimes we look at problems and we don't see them for what they are, which are right. which can be stepping stones. Yes. So you got David and Goliath. Yeah. David goes out, and Goliath is his stepping stone to become king. Right. And then you have oh, but you, Jason, you you're have, not David. You have you have uh, <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. David was just a man. That's right. James says when it talks about Elijah, it says Elijah was just a man and yep. he prayed and it didn't rain for three days. That's right. He's just a man. And he says, then he goes on to say the prayers of a righteous man right. are powerful and effective. That's right. So just remember and that. And we're allowed to pray boldly and we should pray boldly. Well, we James should. ties us all to the Old Testament. Yes. He says, you're no different than Elijah. He was just right. a man, but the prayers right. of a righteous man are powerful and effective and right. you should expect. And actually talking about faith, he says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But the second thing, that's Hebrews, in James... He says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and should expect nothing, mm, yeah. nothing. Right. Like he says, he says, if you're going to pray and be like wishy-washy, you don't have faith, so don't expect anything. Yeah. So real fast, because this came up too, when you pray, God, your will be done, you tell me any time that anybody prayed the will of God except Jesus when he's about to go to the cross. When Jesus is healing the sick, he doesn't say, God, let your will be done. Right. Because he says, I've come to do the will of the Father, right. which is heal the sick, heal the blind, raise the dead, die on the cross, and raise again. He but, came but to do the will. did Jesus ever deny anybody of healing? No. Did Jesus ever tell anybody to wait? No. Or that you have to... No. In fact, what did he tell them? Your faith has saved you. Right. <laughs> so, but, but that's a whole other thing. Like, like, so I understand there's this movement that it, it's almost like a cop-out. It is a cop-out. Because out. I don't have... I can just say, God, your will be done. Yeah. And then that's it. But no, that's not faith. That's and almost then also double. Doesn't, it doesn't require anything of well, you. Well, it's, it's almost like insecurity. I don't know if God will really answer right. this prayer. So if I just say, God, let your yes. will be done, then I don't have to have the faith to believe right. that it does. And if it does or it doesn't, it doesn't matter right. because I was already assuming it wasn't going to happen anyways. Yeah. Right, because it's not really faith. Because, and I think the other thing is, is I think oftentimes, and I know in my life, I, I, I'm like, oh, I have faith. I prayed this, like, oh God, would this happen? Blah blah. If it's your will, blah blah. blah. But it's not actually really faith. It's just like a, oh, I, it's like a. Well, no, because you like have a, a desire. Well, I hope that happens, but probably not. And like, I'm just a suffering servant. Like, no, I'm an heir. I'm a co-heir. 
with Christ, right? I'm, I'm the prodigal son that gets the ring put on my finger, right? And not, not to continue to eat with the pigs, but now to have a, the, the ring on my finger. Well, I, I think it's like you almost had, you almost already met, already set yourself up because you didn't think it was going to happen. So you said, God, let your will be done. Right. And Jesus is, is saying at the cross, right? The garden of Gethsemane, he's like, he's like, God, if there's any other way. Right. Saying like, this is going to be really bad and I know it's going to be yes. bad. It's going to be painful. There's going to be separation from you. I know the wages of what I'm about to face. Right. And he says, if there's any other way, mm. then let it be. But if not, then not my will. Which was not to be killed. He's not a. He's not. Uh, he's not looking to be self harmed or any hurt like that. He didn't want to go through that. Mm. But he said, "Not my will, but yours be done." That's right. And we know from Hebrews that it says that God made him the pioneer of our faith. Right. He appointed him Amen. to be that, so that one would bring many sons and daughters right to glory. Right. And so understanding that, like that, that when we pray in faith, like if I have cancer, and I'm going to go find someone to pray for me. I don't want somebody who who's just like God. Let your will be done. I want someone oh, who's gonna. I want someone who's gonna pray the prayer of faith, healing, yeah, and say and say in the name of Jesus, cancer, you come out. Right. And I, I want that person to pray for me. And actually, I it, if I if if we have a sickness like that, right, we want to go to somebody who's first of all faith is greater than ours, or somebody that can join their faith with ours together, right? And the more people to join the faith, with ours, not a naysayer, not a hopeless person, not a person who only believes that God heals picks and chooses who he heals anytime he wants or like whatever, like he's, you know, just like a, a magic eight ball, like a chance, you know, like that kind of thing. Like a roll of the dice. Uh, I want somebody who who has seen healing, who believes in healing, who believes that we can access healing today, right but, now. But this is the cool thing. Once you see it once or once you experience it, it becomes yeah, easier. That's right. <laughs> it becomes easier. So you get to that point, like, like, yeah, you could, like, I've seen God do things. So tie it back to Daniel, right? Daniel's not the first person to face opposition in the book of Daniel. Right. Oh, who was right, it? right. It was, the, it, the boys. it was the boys, yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Shadrach Daniel chapter Benny, 3, the right? Bunny. He saw what God did for them, and it yeah. was probably a little bit, and actually he saw God do things for himself. Right, that's right. Right, God was already speaking to him, God was doing things, yep. which makes it, it makes it easier when you, when you can hear the voice of God to act on the voice of God. And I guess that goes to where it is important and who you surround yourself with. Yeah. It's important. I saw that, that post, you know, that post on Facebook where it talks about like, you know, it's important who your friends are and their faith and like that kind of thing. It is. It's important with who we affiliate and who we align ourselves with and their faith and what's going on. Because if we align ourselves with people who are dead, who aren't seeing miracles, aren't doing salvations, aren't anything like that, then it's, it's a much harder battle to get there. Well, right at the beginning. So I don't know why we're in the book of Daniel for this podcast, yeah. but we are. But even in the book of well, Daniel, you we see went to where we didn't you plan. see the four people being highlighted. Yes. Right when they do the whole, yep. they're gonna they're gonna give them the best meat in the. Oh, in tell the, tell them the name thing because I don't remember. Uh, maybe in a little bit, but you don't it, remember either. I do. You remember it, what they are? Yeah. The meanings. Like yeah. who is like the Lord? Yeah, but it's like opposite because the Babylonian meanings are opposite. But we're not giving of, any of context meanings. of what we're saying. Well, they might be picking it up. Anyways, actually, I have it. You want to know what's funny? Is I have it written down here. Yeah. See. But anyways, so so when right at the beginning of Daniel, when they get into captivity, they're gonna feed them a special right. diet because they want them to be good. They want them to be strong. Right. Strong like bull, and they want them to be like all those things. But they say no. We're not gonna defile ourselves. He he actually says he says give us. Just some vegetables, and we'll be better than them. We'll be great because God's supernatural provision. So, and it happens. And so, what Bethany was talking about, just so you guys know, in the book of Daniel, uh, you get three, you get you get three boys who show up, and their names we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but those right. aren't actually their names. Not, yeah, those are their Babylonian names. Um, well, first of all, there's Daniel who gets his name changed to Bela, Be Be Beelzebub, or whatever. Yes, that's how you say it. Sebastian Bidyelthazar, but remember that from a uh, never ending story? I was, Sebastian, yeah. Say which my means God name. is my judge. So you think about that when he's standing before the king. He right. says, God's the one who judges right. me, not you. He lives up to his name. You have um, Hananiah, who's Shad uh, Shadrach, I believe, is Hananiah, and it means Yahweh has been gracious. Mm -hmm. You have Michel, who, which means who is like God. Who is what God is, actually, mm -hmm. is what that means. Who can compare to him? And then you have. Ahazariah, which means Yahweh has helped. Hmm. And so those are their names, and that's what they live up to. Right. They don't live up to the to the Babylonian names right. and, because those are all weird God names. And side note, if you are contemplating what to name your baby right now, meanings are important, and what we name our children is important, but that's a side note. Azariah. 
There you go. There's the name. It can be it could be a boy or a girl. Yeah. So if you're looking I feel like that's this, one that just falls. And you don't know in the what to name your baby, Azariah. So cute. Or Hananiah. That's a beautiful. Yahweh has been gracious. Oh, Anyways, yeah. so that's what she was talking about. That's what she wanted me to share. But yeah. where were we going with that? Mm. This has been a feisty conversation. I feel like it's more preachy. Passionate. It's Passionate. more preachy. Yeah. We want you guys to get it. We want you to live in faith. Because right. that's the other thing that we revealed too, to me when we were when we just got licensed and I was praying and it's like it's like getting people to the same level you are. Oh yeah. So that so that family's easier, ministry's easier, life is easier when everybody is up to the level where you are spiritually. Right. So if mom and dad, if if the two that are supposed to become one are right at the same spot, right? Your marriage is going to go a lot smoother. So if, if you're the spouse that you know you're lacking, it's time to raise up. Well, because the other idea is that you grow too. Yes. So like we just said, Paul said he had not obtained it. Right. That's but right. he was pressing on to the, to the goal. Right. And so when you get everybody up to where you are spiritually, it, it, the Spirit of God speaking to them. Right. Vision's easier to share yeah. with them because they're hearing from God too. And sometimes what you find out is that God's speaking to them just as, as he's speaking to you. Their hearts are open to receive more. Yes, yeah. Um, and so it's understanding that you, you're getting people, you're getting, I say people, that's ministry talk, but you're getting your family. Right. Your family to that level. And that's why, like we, we always say, like family devos are so important. Yes. Because it's you pouring into your kids and it's a spiritual investment. Yeah. And the spirit transforms hearts. And so when as parenting becomes easier when you have kids who are spirit-filled. That's right. Because the spirit can bring, brings conviction in the areas where they need to grow. And we have testimony of that. Yeah. Well, I think of like just this week I was talking with Lila who just turned 12. And um, we're in my bed talking. And Lila is just a child that requires heart-to-heart -heart sometimes. She just she really thrives off of one-on-one -on -one heart to hearts and we were talking and I actually I, I have had this dream recently that I continue to, to get interpretation of and I and I just we were talking and I just I shared the dream with her and um, it was incredible because she she offered insight and a portion of interpretation that I hadn't that hadn't been revealed to me yet and I knew it was of the Lord I actually felt the spirit in it she felt the spirit in it and so there we are in this situation where I've had this dream and there's been certain aspects of the dream that I I just didn't quite understand and my 12 year old interprets it that was incredible yes that's just a cool <laughs> just a cool story just a cool testimony it just and it was a blessing to me and and, and it wasn't I don't know I just it was it was a unique situation it was a unique thing that happened that blessed me and that's the lila that's the lila joy who was the one who went out for hours and had the vision of the lady the with, with the, the purple hair purple hair yep and the two kids and she shared the gospel with her the very next day the very next day the same person from the vision she actually told me that night and i was like man you're crazy yeah i didn't tell her that well because like the thing is like when, when god <laughs> then i was the one that was convicted in the right end. when god begins to do things in your family and you begin to model things like um like going out in spirit or visions dreams testimony words you know like th th things of that nature god giving words right your your kids pick up on it and then they have freedom yeah in it as well and then they begin to recognize these things oh this is from god this is from god and um faith comes easier to kids it just does and so then you've got to you well, know because there's a trust that they have right it's, this is from the God, and, and they they don't have all the garbage that, that we have. They well, haven't they, built up the we've garbage. We've seen it on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. so with our kids, bringing them to these events, to like these these moves of God, that's right. what they are. They're moves of God so right. that they can experience the Spirit and hear the voice of the Spirit. Yes. Know the As presence training. of the Spirit so it's not awkward to them. That was something that we said at the beginning. Yes. We said, I, I remember having this conversation. I said, I don't want the Holy Spirit being awkward to that's our right. kids. That's right. I don't want the Holy Spirit to step into a room my kids being like, this is weird. Right. Like, what is this? Right. I want them to know the Spirit, know the presence of the Spirit so that they can operate. And so, that, so that when the Spirit enters the room, they know, okay, anointing's here. Now we flow. Right. Not like, not like put a wall up and be like, uh, right. this doesn't mm -hmm. fit my theological con construct right. of what God should do and how right. he should move. Um, but to be able to flow with the Spirit. Yes. And so we, we said that. And so getting your kids into those environments... And, and having those places where they can experience, where they can see it. But not only that, where they can see you. Where they can, because if, right. my, if my kids can hear the voice of the Spirit, but I can't, then I need to do something because mm -hmm. I'm the one that's supposed to be the Shepherding, spiritual, leading. The, the leader of the right. house. I need to set the spiritual climate. Right. The, the, I'm the thermostat. 
essentially, mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a father yeah. who loves Jesus, I'm the thermostat. Now, if you're a father and you don't love Jesus, then you don't have a thermostat. Right. So you, you're not that. And you can't lead your... your and you can't lead your family to that place. If you, can't, you essentially can't lead anybody where you have not been. Right. Right. And that's, that's, a, true, that's a true statement. And, um, and it gets thrown around a lot, but it's true. Because, because ultimately, it's about relationship. Yeah. Right? So everything, everything that, that you minister from, that place, is out of relationship. Yes. It's you spending time in the presence of God. Like, like I think about that in John 10 when Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. That's right. So you, there's automatically an identification. God is speaking. I hear Amen. his voice. And you know his voice. They know it, and they follow him. And it comforts you. Well, that's not what it says there. I know. But it, says, it says they follow me. Right. Because they know my voice. They can identify it out of anybody else's voice. There's a lot of voices in this world that tell you how you should live, how you should parent, what you should do, Your and what you shouldn't do. There's all these different voices. But Jesus says, my sheep, they don't just, they don't just read a book. They don't just like turn to this person on, on YouTube to, to try to figure out what I'm saying. They don't turn to this. My sheep know my voice. They hear me. And they follow me. Right. Meaning and that God is speaking. Can you hear him? And if you do hear him, are you following him? Because the following is the faith. Right. And it, and it starts in his word. It starts like practically being in his word, knowing his word, reading his word, being submerged in his word, praying, being in prayer. Well, but not just praying, being, being in the spirit and and, and, and uh, practicing it. Right. Because then it takes it takes a practice to understand and to hear the voice of God. And, okay. and the more you respond and the more obedient you are. And, and dare I say, the more instantly and quickly quick you are in your obedience, the faster it is or the more that you learn to hear God's voice. So, so with that, too, that that's the anointing. Yes. The anointing is, 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 is so it says this uh, in John chapter two, it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth. That's right. Wow. And then he goes on to say this. Well, that's the well. And then he goes on to say this. He says, I have written these things to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. I'm not saying that you don't go to teachers and you don't have people right. pour in your life. That's not what he's saying there. He's saying that you know the voice of God. Well, and He's saying that, you, that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And so therefore, when people are trying to deceive you, you can pick out what's right and what's wrong. You well, can rightfully discern things that are happening in this world. And it, and it goes back into that, that, that his spirit is inside of you. His spirit lives inside of you. It's that well that it talks about. As a believer in Christ, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, right, that well, that water is inside of you. Living water is inside of you. And, and as Dr. Rodney, I think it was Dr. Rodney, might have been Dr. Odonica, but it talks about it's that pulley system, right? If your pulley system and your bucket are rusty or have holes or have gone down a little while that that's an issue and so it, it's all about getting that pulley system of reaching down of learning and pulling up that water and living in the overflow so that, like it's like a spring you know overflowing in your life yeah the there's the analogy of, of like a cup and so often uh the way the way the american church works um is that you go to church on sunday and you get full right and then all throughout the week it's 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 emptying right Work suck, work drains it out of you, your family, all these things drain it after you. Or sometimes it, it just dissipates if it's not yeah, cause refreshed. Yeah, because evaporation yeah. just goes away. But that's but what but but where God wants you to be is always full. That's right. That's why you have access to the presence of God. That's yeah. why you have the Spirit of God. That's why you have the anointing of God. That's why you have well like when she when she's talking about wells, they're wells that we draw in from within our spirit that He gives us streams of that that living water that bubbles up from inside that that's that we're constantly going back to that source. Yeah. Like we don't we when we we got a source inside of us, a source of eternal life, a source that bubbles up. Mm -hmm. So when we are down or we are outcast or we are going through going through those circumstances, we have something to draw from. Right. His spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the sons of God. Right. It's it bubbles up from within and that's where you go. You go to the spirit of God who who, who leads you, guides you and directs you and re and renews that renews that life in, inside of you and um and so you were about to say something well i, I think um yeah i had it and then i i lost it she lost it man it was good too well I've had that happen to me before yeah, a couple man, times man that was like so good i mean i like had it and it was like it was like a say, say again what you were just saying well that you have the source inside of you that God says, I'll put my spirit inside of you. Actually, that's also true, too. So in Ezekiel... Oh, right? I got it. D don't talk. I got it. 
it that's it's and that we all have our own wells that we have to dig every single person every single ministry your well isn't somebody else's well you need to dig from your own well you, your ministry needs to dig from the from its own well or you know you know what i that mean from? hold on i'm not done and that that is your faith increasing it is that's, re- say- that's the revelation. That that's the increasing of your faith. That's the growing of your faith. The more that you dig those wells, the more that you, that you open it up. Right. That's that's the le- that's the leveling, not leveling. That's the increasing. That's the expanding. That that's it. That was the revelation. Oh, I said, where did you hear that from? The digging of your own wells. Well, yeah. I mean, we talked about it. Yeah. You want credit for it? Thank you. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, that's what it is. We have we to say, Pastor we- Rodney, and we say. <laughs> I didn't know you came least- up with it. Yes, I, I never I told you the story. It's, 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 we have to dig from our own wells. We have to dig from our own wells. Our ministry, our churches, you know, there are many wonderful, amazing churches. Our, our doctor, our friend, Dr. Rodney, right? His church is incredible. We love his church, but that's not, our, not that's not our church. Our church is different. You kidding me? If we did a pavilion out here, we'd freeze. We'd freeze. Yeah. Uh, we live in the frozen the chosen man. <laughs> but he has hypothermia. Um, but like, but yeah, that actually that's the important thing is that you don't mimic people. Yeah. You don't just copy like a, uh, like a how to like like that's the other thing is is like people think that things are formula. It's not a pro- yes. That's the so word. so if you just get the right formula and you abide by the formula, then you're gonna achieve the things that you need to to flow like somebody else. But it's not that. It's like we said before. It's relationship. Relationship grows based on communication. Right. Well, I mean, in time. How many like evangelical churches have like the formula for growth, right? You know, you got to get your greeting down. You got to get pl- people plugged in very quickly into serving so you can keep them longer. You know, there's a formula for churches that a lot of churches base off of using. But the thing is, is that God is not really a formula kind of God. He's a he's a burst through new wells kind of God. He's a part the Red Sea kind of God. And so we have to remember that as we're in ministries, but also in our families. Your family is not going to look like our family. Your family Devo times doesn't look like our family Devo times. Your conversations, your raising of your children, right? It doesn't look like our, you might not be driving three hours to services, you know, once a month or whatever, like we are. And that that's okay because God is doing something uniquely in your family, in your home, in your marriage, in yourself is one, you got to allow him and two, you got to increase your faith. And you create that environment within your within your household and the culture, yeah. So that God can speak. So you yes. you give that opportunity for your kids to be in that position. You don't have to go to like, 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 like to Tampa, Florida per se. I would highly recommend it though because it's very well. Refreshing. I mean, the thing is, is but you can this one first one. Yeah. But you can create. But you can allow those places in your home. Right. It's not. You don't have to go to a religious sphere sphere to get those. But right. God is with you. God is like, He's with you always. Like right. He doesn't leave you nor forsake you. So those, so those things that you can get experience in a church, you sh- you can experience in your in your own personal yeah. life, and you can experience them in your family life too. Right. It's not it's not one or the other. It's both. Right. Well, I think uh, I was just gonna explain like the, the reason why we did what we did is because we didn't know how to we didn't know how to live in the overflow. We didn't know what it was, and we didn't really know how to give it to our children we didn't know and so our only thought was in that process that we were going to go where we heard that god was well we were on a spiritual journey too to get us to that place where god wanted us to be right because we had we had kind of tuned that out for a while i saw recently in like a pastor's wife group they were talking about like how long are your services or like how long does the pastor preach for and at our church, you know, we're like two to three hours that, that the preaching is happening. And, and um, people were like shocked and they were like, well, how? Like, how do you get everyone to sit for that? Like, <laughs> how do you not lose people? Like, how? how? And I was thinking about it like, well, it hasn't always been this way. We used to be two services. used to be, you know, hour, hour and a half or whatever it was, um, you know, the total for the service. So how do we get to this place? What am I looking at? Uh, I, if you look at the screen right there, it's Jacob Lebrecht. He actually tuned into the live stream when we were giving the thing away, and he says, I want to recap. Okay. Well, I was so I thought, I, would just, I thought that was funny. Okay, so I was thinking in it, like, how, well, how Sorry. did we get to that place? Like, what what changed? Where did we get to it? And the first thing that had to happen, and, and you can model this for a family just as much as the ministry, is that the leaders had to be filled. The leaders had to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The leaders had to be filled and living life in the overflow because you can't expect your body to be living in the overflow if you're not. 
But, and so, and that goes for the same as family. You can't expect your children to be growing leaps and bound in Jesus if you and your spouse are not. So, so that's the very first thing. And then, and then it has to come and it has to pour down to the rest of, of, of it. You know, you have to pour, it has to overflow, it has to drip down, it has to pour onto everybody else. And then, um, but it starts from the top. So a biblical picture of that real fast, because I always try to tie it back to the Bible. This is the way my mind works. Is uh, is the priest? Yes. So before the priest could make sacrifice for the people, he had to purify going. himself in order to do the ministry right. to them. So he had to go there first, right? Before he could actually do it for the people. Yeah. Now we have a great high priest Amen. who has gone before us, That's right. whose We're name is Jesus Christ, and he's at the right hand of the Father. Right. Uh, right now interceding for us. It actually says it, it's, that's what he's doing. But but the idea that like we have access to God. So mm -hmm. therefore, if we're going to bring people, especially our children and our family members with us, we need to go to those places. Right. We need to take on that, that priestly role of the house and do the things for ourselves so that we can bring others into the presence. Right. That's right. And so I was just thinking that like that it says that, that the priest had to make sacrifice. That was what was wrong with the system. Right. Is they themselves can stay pure, so they had to kill something in order to be pure, so that they could make purity purification for everybody else. Jesus was unadulterated. Right. He was pure. Right. No sin found in him. Right. So we need to do that with our with with our family as as ministers, because that's really what we are. When yes. we talk about being anointed to be parents, like like spirit filled parenting, mm -hmm. it's the spirit speaking to you, so that or moving through you, so that you can minister to your kids. Yes. Because I mean, let's just face it. Um, most of the time, we're not we're not functioning like ancient Israel. By the time they're ten, they I'm already not know. Not slaughtering their sheep. Or well, no. By the time they're ten, they already know the law. Right. They know all that part of the Bible. What we do in in, in our culture is we tend to send them yes. to secular systems that teach them everything but the Word of God. Right. It teaches them that you that 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 there's no such thing as 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 uh, as as gender. It's all just fluid right. stuff. Something as basic biology. It, it, mix, misses, it messes that up. Right. And so it's even more important now that as parents, we act as the spiritual leaders of our household. That's right. We already said that there's spiritual forces at work in this world. Yeah. And how do, they, how do they make their presence known? Through physical situations, through people. Right. The prince of Persia, the prince of Greece, they came about by the rulers and the political systems that were being established on the world. Right. And Michael was fighting them. Yeah. For the people of God. Um, and, and, and they're still happening to this day. You might look at it and say, well, there's a Republican Party and there's a Democratic Party. But we already know it's spiritual because what does is, what is Gabriel do? He lays out the whole end times that's for right. Daniel and says, look, these are the spiritual forces at work. There's going to be an Antichrist that's going to rise up. Yep. He's from the devil. Right. And guess what? At the end, God's going to kibosh him. Yep. Complete. But but it's all spiritual things that are infiltrating right. on this world and they make their presence known through physical Things, yes. physical situations, ideas that, that pop up in political systems that, that try to limit or try to push, push a false narrative, that try to remove God from things, yeah. that try to get the church not to sing or take communion. Those are the spiritual principalities at work. But the church says, uh, but the Bible says that in Corinthians that we're, we're giving weapons of warfare to tear them down. That's right. So anything that comes against my family, I tear it down. That's right. Okay. You don't get that. Don't get to make a stronghold in my family. Right. And, and no, because the Bible says this, it, does, it says no weapon formed against you. There will be weapons formed, but they don't prosper. Right. So those arrows right. might be shot, but back to the Psalm 23, God has prepared a buffet. Right. It doesn't matter what my enemies are doing because I'm blessed. And, and that's something that like we've begun or I begin to, to pray over our family too, is that, that realization that w weapons are going to form. That, that's what the Bible says. It doesn't say like you're going to achieve this level of faith and like now you, there's not going to be any weapons. No, they are going to form. And actually I'd say the more you go, the more you increase your faith, the more the weapons are, are going to be formed. But it says that they will not prosper, right? And, and, we, and so every day when I pray over my children, I thank God that no weapons formed against us will prosper because that's the promise that he gave us. And so I thank him for that every single day. I say, thank you, Jesus, that no weapon formed against us are gonna pro is going to so, prosper. So with that, too, there's two things, right? So, so the weapons may be formed, but they're not going to prosper because you're already walking in victory. That's right. Amen. So like, you already have it. They, God already said that. And right. so, so you come to Ephesians, right? The end of Ephesians, and people pray on the armor of God all they want. I never take the armor off. <laughs> like, why would you? Like, you don't take it off. Put on the breastplate. You, 
You don't take it off, right? You don't take it right. off. You, you walk, live in it. You live in it. I, I, I'm, I'm always wearing my salvation. Right. I'm always wearing righteousness and right. faith and the gospel and all those things. I always, the sword of the word. I'm in the word. I right. have the word. I know the word. I can, that's why it's right. easy to tie stories back to the word. Amen. Yeah. Um, so you, you, I, you don't take it off. That's so right. you always have, you're always prepared. That's right. And then the other idea of this is that, like it says, therefore stand, stand strong in the power of his might. It's right. It's not, it's, and it's right. It's not. I don't go right. running onto a battlefield by myself, just like chucking spears at, at enemies. That's I right. stand in the power of the might right. of God. Right. His might is the one that, and so like we take it out of order sometimes. Yeah. The Bible says, submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. Therefore resist the devil. That's right. So there's a submission under God's mighty right. hand. His, so I've been in the presence of God. I submitted myself to God. And therefore, it doesn't matter what enemy That's the right. enemy has for me. I've been in the presence Amen. of God. That's right. And, uh, and so it's understanding that, 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 I don't want to say formula, but understanding that. Oh, that, we just spoke against formula. But it's not, it's not, it's a relationship, right? <laughs> right. It's like, it's like when you go up, if you're on the playground and there's a bully and then all of a sudden your dad's standing behind you, the bully acts a lot different. Right. Right, and it's understanding like Satan might be a bully, right. but my God is with me, and He's standing yes. behind me, and He's going to act a lot different when I walk into a room right. because I have the I have God Almighty. And with we're me. we're marked, we're marked with the blood of the Lamb. We're, yeah, un and so and that's something that that we have to recognize, but not just know because I think like a lot of times like we'll, we'll be like yeah yeah we're, we're marked by the blood of the Lamb like we know that, but no you have to know it, you have to live in it, and you have to walk it. You have to walk it. You have to, and that's that's the expanding and the increasing of faith. Which again, I just want to say again, is not something. It's not an offense. Don't take offense to it when when we talk about growing in faith and increasing faith and not being yet being there yet in faith. Right? No, we're encouraging you. You're you're yes. you're a half mile out from shore. That's right. You just Keep going. Keep 26 going. Twenty six miles. Don't that's stop right. now. The yes. fog might be there, Amen. but victory's on the other right. side. Right. That's how we started it, and that's the whole kind of process we're going through. The, like the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, right. and the verse doesn't stop there. So don't stop there and believe. Right. Amen. Don't stop there and believing. Yeah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from all of that's them. Right. Amen. So don't don't stop short in your faith. Right. Don't stop short. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. What are you looking at? The time frame. All right. It's time, I think. Yeah. One one oh seven. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us uh, for this episode, episode twenty of Raising the Revival Generation. That one was like very passion filled. Maybe be, maybe before we go. Okay, we're not closing. Uh, we should do a prayer for them. All right. Because I, I don't know. I, I just feel like like maybe you're listening to this and you're that half mile off. Yeah. And you're tired and you're spent and you're like, man, I don't even know if I can go another That's minute. Right. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe it's with your children. Who knows what it is? Thoughts. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. That that maybe maybe we maybe we should pray over them real fast. Sure. And so if, if, if that's you and you're, and you're feeling that, right, then, then, uh, then receive this. Yes. Say, God, I receive this. Yeah. I receive it. And so I'm a prayer fast. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who are listening, Lord God. I thank you that you have, that you have called them. Mm. And those you call, you, you give a special grace to complete the task that you've called them to do. Amen. And so parenting is a calling. And you've given us special grace and anointing to be parents so that we can accomplish the will. If, you, if they're married, Lord God, you've called them. Marriage is, is something that you have, you have ordained. And I pray right now, Lord God, that you would just give them the supernatural help that they need for their natural issues. Amen. Lord God, that right now, just as David said, that they would say, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, mm. and I believe that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And Lord God, that even right now, that they would increase in their faith. Lord God, I pray for marriages right now. I pray a blessing over marriages, Lord God, that there would be times of peace and tranquility, Lord God, that, that, you, would just, um, that, that you would just bring uh, unity yes. in marriages right now, Lord God, where there might be rockiness, Lord God, that mm. even restoration, yeah, Lord God, that, mm. you, would, uh, that, you, would, uh, that you would restore the years that the locusts yes. have eaten. That's the promise that you make, that you're the God who restores the years mm. that have been devastated. That's right. Thank you, Jesus, that you do that, Lord God. Um, and so I pray that right now. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you just bless every hearer, whoever's listening to this, even if it's someone on a computer that's far away that can just hear that's this right. prayer, that you would bless them too, Amen. Lord God. And so we thank you and praise you.
for all you do. You are good, you are gracious, and you love us unconditionally, and we love you too, God. And we say the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. 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 And so I just felt like we should pray for them. Yeah. And and end it with that. And if you need prayer, if you need prayer further. Specific. We, specific prayer, uh, something, you know, in your life, big, small, whatever, uh, that you need people to come and uh, join with you in prayer. We would love to do that. And um, additionally, I haven't told you this because it just literally popped in my mind. So I think it's the Holy Spirit. Is, um, is, is we'd like to create some prayer partners within this ministry. So that's just keep up, you know. Uh, be on the lookout for that and, and that uh, I think we should develop a prayer team specifically for the people um, you know in this ministry so if you need prayer we want to pray over you we love you uh, we are blessed by you can I ask for one thing too no okay <laughs> yes if, if this ministry is blessing you yeah then um and it's and it's feeding you mm -hmm. Uh, pray for us yes amen pray a blessing over us yeah prayer is powerful and That's effective right. and right. uh, and we can we can uh, we can move the heart of God. Amen. That's through right. prayer and through supplication. That's right. And so pray for us. Yeah. Pray, a, pray a blessing over this ministry. Yes. Uh, I do that now, like uh, in, in Timothy. Mm -hmm. Timothy's reminded that, that God wants you to pray for your leaders. Yes. And so when I go to my quiet time, yep. I've incorporated that where I pray for my leaders. That's right. Both, Amen. Both physical leaders. Yep. I pray that God will get them and that God will... <laughs> Not get them as in wipe them out, yeah. but maybe remove them if they're in the way. Right. Um, but that God would bless them and he would reveal himself to them. Yeah. Um, but but I also pray for my spiritual leaders that God Amen. would, I thank them and I pray that God will bless them abundantly and continue to bless them yes. and that they would walk in oh, blessing yeah. right. because it trickles down to me. That's right. Um, so I'm not out there looking for blessing. Blessing's out there looking yeah. for me. And so by all means, if you are blessed, please pray for us. Yes. Um, and if you want to, and if you want to bless this ministry, because that's what it is, it's a ministry, then you can do that too through. Yeah, through partnership, you can sow a seed, you can uh, become a monthly supporter or uh, just a one-time seed. That's fine too. Um, that's going to be below this episode. There's going to be the ways and the means in which to do so. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing, because um, we want to plug this in too, is, is if you are interested in, in doing soul winning. Mm. That's um, right. we always tie this in. It's another ministry that, that, we're, that we are partnered with. Yeah. Um, is the, is the Jesus project. Yes. And, um, and you can go there and you can get resources and get tools that you need. Soul winning scripts. Um, soul training. winning scripts. Yeah. To, so that you can be an effective minister. And I believe that they said that if you reach out, they'll even set it up so that someone will come and train. Yeah. You. Could be us. Um, yeah. Could be us. Could be us. Cause I'm actually on the board. <laughs> you are. And actually that leads us to our next thing. If this ministry has blessed you and you want more and you say like, wow, I mean, I'd love to bring these people to my church and you are in the continental U.S., um, we would love to come and uh, we can get that set up. We can get that in the, um, and we're not, we're not going to come and burden your church or anything and ask, you know, for a million dollars or anything. That's, that's not what we're about. Um, but if you would like more, would you want to set up a, conference or a one night thing or, or something of that nature um there is a form on the website revivalgenerationministries.com and it's right there you can get in touch with us and we will be back with you shortly yeah and that's the one thing too just like we're not we're not we felt like when we started this that god really placed it at a unique yes. time yes and a unique calling that so like there's a lot of there's there's people that we go and this hit me today is that there's certain things we don't we don't preach on. It doesn't mean that that we don't know them or we don't understand them. It's that this is the unique calling that God has for revival generation ministries. That's right, Amen. It's unique. It's not like we're not we're not preaching about the Antichrist. You yeah. can get a lot of information about the Antichrist. You can grow in the knowledge of end times. And if you want more more in the end times, you can look up our friend uh, Tiff Shuttlesworth, Tiff, Lost, Lost Land, Land Ministries. And and that and but but God has specifically called us to strengthen the family. That's right. Amen. And so that's what this ministry is about. Yes. So we're not going to go around and just start preaching random things yeah. about we want to encourage parents to, to answer the calling that God uh, of being the shepherd of their family, of the, the stewards of their children's hearts. Right. And then see families strengthened. Right. The, um, because there's so much attack on them right now between the media and right. between everything. And the heart of the church is the heart of the family. And, and with that, so I tell that too, like when you were saying we won't burden you. Yeah. Is that, that this ministry, it isn't, it isn't a, it isn't something to just be like a financial gain thing. No, that's no. not why we did this. And in fact, we if God doesn't blessed. want it, if, if God doesn't supply for it, then it doesn't happen. So because he, it's his ministry. It's his ministry. It's his that's calling. Right. He has to fulfill his promises to right. keep. 
But so just understand that too, is that this is a ministry that that's meant to help bless families Amen. That's and equip families and parents Yeah. and parents because, because God has called you, God has blessed your life with children and, and, uh, and it is a blessing. Right. How many times do we do we go to the grocery store and they're like, "You have seven kids," and they're like, "Oh my goodness, God bless you!" And it's like, He yeah. has, don't you? Don't you understand? Children right. are a blessing from the Lord. We've been multiple. We blessed. love our blessings. We love yeah. our blessings, and so we want to see you thrive, and and um and see that 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 your kids don't get lost to, to, in the world. That's right. It would be a I, if I made it to heaven and my kids didn't make it, it would suck. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so that's the reality of it. And yeah. so we, we pray God's blessing over you. We love you guys. God Amen. loves you. And God has, God is that ever present help in all circumstances. Don't in all circumstances, you can look to the Hills and say, my help comes from the Lord Yeah. in parenting and finances and marriage. And, um, so yeah, you guys want to say, I think that's it. I think we said it all. That's so it. Follow our socials. If you want to keep up with more, on what's going on. Uh, we've been rolling out some big things here at Raising the Rival Generation Ministries. And, of course, if you want to get in on the next giveaway, join the Facebook group. Yeah. And the, everything will be linked below. Awesome. And so with that, I'm um, close us out, in the, close out in the traditional Dr. Richie way, which I've come to appreciate him even more. Amen. Um, maybe one day he'll see this and be like, hey, I didn't know he was doing that. <laughs> and he's, a, he's like... Yeah, he's an intense guy. I love him. <laughs> but God bless you guys. We love you.